Well, hi everybody, this is Dan on the South, and welcome. Today, we're going to be talking about how we reuse and recycle things. So if you are big into that, feel free to join us and uh, hope that not only that you get to share some things, but also that you actually get to give other people your ideas, because I think half the time what we're looking at is how can we do things better? So we're going to be getting onto that in just a little while. But while we're waiting for people to get in here, um, we've got a couple of updates and things that we like to do. And of course, the first thing that I really want to say is Happy Mother's Day to those of you who might be ghosting at the moment. <laughs> For those of you who are in North America, I know that if you're in Europe, this is not Happy Mother's Day. So uh, <laughs> we'll try and get that one sorted out uh, and get a Mother's Day wish out to the Europeans at a better time. All right. The, just an update. Uh, for those of you who need it, um, we're still waiting to hear on Erin's test. She's going to let us know as soon as she gets the results, or not necessarily as soon as, but when she gets the results. Lauren's doing a great job. It looks like she'll probably be going home soon, which is wonderful. Jodie's been having a tough time of it, but being Jodie, she hasn't been telling anybody or complaining about it, but I just happen to know from what's going on that she's been having a bit of a difficult time. So uh, I really, as you know, really appreciate all that she does to help us out on the broadcast. She does a great job uh, doing all the background stuff for the broadcast. So thank you, Jodie. Kerry, <laughs> what can I say? Kerry's in love. <laughs> so, you know, that, that's about all we can say at the moment with Kerry. She seems to be doing fine. Hi there, Linda. Good to see you. You got your kappa. Good. I hope you've got some good ideas about recycling and reusing as well. And finally, Becca, which our hearts and prayers go out to Becca, who she's, as some of you know, she's still um, struggling with grief and probably will be for you know, a long time. Mm. I mentioned you, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to know what I said? <laughs> oh, you're using, oh, I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. We should add that in. That's a good one. Um, yes, I'm always looking for useful things to do. Um, with those. No, I just said, you know, you were in love. What what else could we say, really, Kerry? <laughs> you know, I've been there. I know that the mind works at a different level. So <laughs> it's good that you heard your name, though. We like that. <laughs> uh, what day are we today? The 13th. I, tomorrow, I think, is Jonas's birthday. I don't know if he'll make it to the broadcast, but I believe it's his birthday tomorrow. And I just want to put this a bit later on because people are not here yet. Um, all right, let's just do a quick update, except I think you two might know. Ah. Just bear with me a second. I want to just get these updates right. Okay, so Beth is still on track. Uh, for a thousand calories, she got one more week to go. I think it's pretty exciting that she's done that for a week. Uh, Sakura came on for a short time on Friday, and it sounded like she's still doing well with uh, a CrossFit. Haven't seen Chloe this weekend. Ireland is getting his things, getting his life together so he can do this writers group thing. Hi there, Jody. Um, and then didn't get an update from Canada. Maybe she'll pop in. Jonas was going to try the aluminum foil thing. Sarah was busy with those mold issues and house hunting. 
Linda, how's the treadmill? <laughs> it, it's interesting. Um, I, I've heard that you're still loving it. That's good. I've heard that 75% or more of people who own a treadmill use it to hang clothes on rather than do anything on it. So um, let's check with you in six months time and see if it's become, uh, if, if you're still using it to that degree. I hope you are because it'll be great for your body if you do. I was looking somewhere this, last, this weekend and it was showing the benefits of walking, what it does to your body. And so, you know, if you're on a treadmill, that's a great way to do it. All right. I am on a track to try and find a handyman. That's my news update, as you, some of you know. All right. Does anybody have anything new that they want to add to getting things done, just so that I can add it in? If anybody's got more stuff that they want to add so we can keep track of it. Linda, how long do you manage to do on your treadmill? Now, I'm actually very proud of myself today, but I'll actually I'll talk about that in a second. I, I achieved something today that I've, one of those things I've always wanted to do and never could, and today I did. So <laughs> and, oh, oh, do, do any of you want to know that I had a major trigger? Your laundry's done good. So, okay, Kerry, so we should put you on that list. Okay, so you, but you've got all yours done. Have you got anything ready for this week? Yeah, well, I want you to imagine for a second, you probably can tell by the way I, I, I started that, that this one was, got me good. <laughs> so I was off shopping yesterday, getting stuff ready to do the stuffed burgers today, and you know, I had a lot of yeah, stuff in the car and I came home. And when I came home, my front lawn was covered in for sale signs for the property across the road. And I'm going, um, excuse me, did anybody ask my permission to do that? So being who I am, <clears throat> what do you think I did? <laughs> so let's see how well you know me <laughs> first of all if you had come home and found you know some realtor signs all over your lawn hi there Aaron you know if you'd found a realtor sign all over your lawn would any of you have reacted or would you just have gone oh fair enough that's what they do <laughs> anyway, so I took a little walk. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I took a little walk. I left the groceries in the car and I took a little walk across the street. And um, I, <laughs> I knocked on the door of the property and this realtor um, was standing there and I said, hi there. I said, I just want to check. Um, did you ask permission of anybody across the road to put your signs on, on their lawn? And he said, no, we don't have to. We do it all the time. And, you know, it was the arrogance of the way that he said it. <laughs> really, you know, <laughs> if he'd said, 
gee, no, I really should have done that. And I really apologize. Is it okay? I might have had a different reaction. But because he was so entitled, I said, well, I'd like to just let you know I'm the owner of the property across the street. And I'd like you to get your signs off my property, please. I said, I'd like you to get your signs off my property. Now, <laughs> but they're not in, you know, not doing any harm. I said, sir, they're on my property. You didn't ask permission. I don't reward bad behavior. So do me a favor. <laughs> get them off my property, please. Well, where am I going to put them? I go, I really don't care. <laughs> I, Kerry, I wanted to give him the uh, <laughs> the finger, but I didn't. <laughs> mm. And so then he then he did. He couldn't resist it, right? He said, "Well, you have yourself a nice little day. So why don't you?" And I burst out laughing. I said, "Hey, that's so kind of you. I sure will." <laughs> Especially now, <laughs> you know, and I just, I just left and carried on walking. Mm. Well, of course it is, Jody, because it's bad manners. All right, and you and I have a thing about bad manners. So, um, no, no, I'm not saying that we don't ever, that we're never bad mannered. It's just we try not to be, right? And so to me, if he'd come to me and said, you know, would you mind terribly? I probably would have said, yes, go right ahead. Just, you know, don't block the driveways. Yeah, so I had absolutely no fear. I, I really didn't. And I knew my rights. Um, he does not have the right to stick his signs on my property without permission. It wasn't confrontation, Linda. It was a very simple discussion. Yes, you see, but that's the thing, Kerry. I'm learning that I don't have to be nasty with it. I can just be assertive, I think is the word. <laughs> you know, it's just like, yeah, well, I'm the owner, and I'd really like you to get your signs off my property now. <laughs> so do you understand, though, that... Most people wouldn't dare do that. And, you know, as, as Linda so correctly says, most people are so scared of confrontation that they wouldn't do it. And it wasn't that I wanted to be a nasty person. It was just like, yeah, you would have said it sweetly. Okay, Kerry, it's okay if you can say it sweetly. <laughs> All right, so I don't think we've, have we got anybody here that we... Hang on, let me just see who's here. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so there's nobody here that doesn't know who we are. Oh, I don't know what I just did. Um, so, hi, Beth. Yeah, you see, you would have just taken the signs and done something. I wanted to make, make a point. I, I didn't want to just return them because I... Can I tell you why, Beth? If for any reason, if for any reason those signs went missing, um, I, I, I removed them. I wanted him to remove them. That's just me. I'm just a bit funny like that. All right. So if there is anybody ghosting right now, welcome. And we do welcome you to join us. You don't have to say anything. I'm glad if you're listening. And we are about to do a little bit on reuse and recycle. So we're going to do that. And it's now 1420, Jody. Um, I want to start off with a couple of facts that I thought some of you might find interesting. Did you know that Americans throw away enough garbage every day to fill 63,000 garbage trucks, which if lined up from end to end for an entire year, would stretch halfway to the moon. Can you believe that? 
And that is a bit of a survey that was done by students of uh, Utah University. I don't know about you, but that's quite a lot of garbage. <laughs> and then I went looking. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I wasn't surprised either. All right, so now then, I can't remember who said this. I, for some reason, I forgot the quote. But um, this is what I found as well, and I thought this was relevant. Being environmentally conscious on Recycling Day and sorting your rubbish and your compost and your recycling and general waste bins, it's fantastic. But it is important to think about producing less rubbish to begin with. How many of you agree with that? That, that you've started to think about how do I create less garbage. So I thought we would just do a little reminder <laughs> and let's see how good your knowledge is. How long does it take for paper to decompose? You throw paper into the um, landfill, how long does it take to decompose? Any ideas? That's great, Linda. Hi, Canada. Happy Mother's Day. Yes, exactly. Good. I'm glad you're ready. For it. All right. So, how many how many months do you think it takes for a piece of paper to um, biodegrade? Anybody? Is it two weeks? Two months or two years? Two, two months is good. It's actually 2.5, but a very good answer. What about orange peel? How long do you think a piece, you know, a piece of orange peel takes to decompose? Six months, a year, two years. Yeah, it's close. i got to work out how to say that. Do we call you Nader now? Yeah, orange peel takes six months. A milk carton, you know, one of the ones that is in the wax type thing, not, not in the plastic, but the ones that's uh, in the recyclable container. And that would be for juice boxes that are in those sort of containers as well. Any idea roughly how long that takes to decompose? A year, yeah, well, that would be good. It actually takes five years. How about that? What about a cigarette butt? Nada, okay, I'm going to call you. Nada, nada. Okay, nada, that's how it would be. All right, uh, a cigarette butt, 10 to 12 years. Can you believe that? And the same for a plastic bag. It takes 10 to 12 years. Actually, a plastic bag takes 10 to 20 years. Sorry. How about a disposable diaper? This one shocked me. Yeah. A disposable diaper. Two or three years, you guys are saying. Are, are, you, are you sitting down, people? Take a breath. 75 years. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> All right, so now then, are you ready? How about a tin can? You know, you the soup can or yeah, 75 years. Um, you take a, you know, a soup can and you 
throw that into the garbage. What's your best guess for a tin can? You're quite right, Kerry. A hundred years. Yep. What about a beer can? I didn't know it was still. Hi, Chloe. Chloe, we need to catch up with you in a moment when we finish this bit. Hang on a second. Um, how about a beer can? I, I, well, I don't know why it's different. Yeah, Chloe, apparently it's two to 500 years. Chloe's right. What about styrofoam? Let's, let's lighten it up a bit with something. What about styrofoam? How many years? I don't know, Linda. That's what I wanted to know. Why is a tin can different from a, a, a I guess, oh, because a tin can is made, it's not made from aluminum or aluminum, depending what country you're in. All right. Styrofoam, Kerry. Thank you for giving it a go. I always appreciate people who take that risk. Never. Did you know that? It never breaks down. So generations later, they will find our styrofoam. So I don't know about you, but that's a really good reason not to have styrofoam in our lives. Then why do they even make it? I agree. <laughs> Nada is now triggered. You see? I tell you something, we've, we've got all the words now, right? <laughs> oh, I got triggered then. <laughs> Tin is a natural element. Thank you, McBrucey. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, as opposed to aluminum, which is, or aluminum, depending on which country, um, you know, which is a different metal. So, what about glass bottles and jars? McBrucey, where are you from? I mean, other than the obvious. <laughs> are you from Scotland? <laughs> Yeah, Linda's correct. Glass, bottles, and jars never jump freeze. How about that? Actually, I was thinking, you know something like bride, you know I come from those parts, right? Because otherwise I would have called it dumb fries. <laughs> yeah, if I'd been an American. Yep. Yeah. Um, but it's dumb freeze. So <laughs> welcome. <laughs> and it, yeah, never mind. A broad bricks moonlit nicht the new. Um, all right, so did any of you, did any of you learn anything? There's not much point in my doing this research for you if we didn't learn anything. How many of you are going, I don't want to use styrofoam anymore? Hmm. All right, now I did find some, this is pretty old research, but I thought it was interesting. I found some research. Yeah, we need to teach more recycling, to, not only to kids, we need to teach it to us. I'm sorry. I, I think we need to know more about it. You know, I, I don't think it's just the kids. All right, so, and this was a survey done in Australia, and I thought you'd be interested that Australians threw away 
$2.9 billion of fresh food. Can you believe it? Um, $630 million of uneaten takeaway food. They say that $876 million worth of leftovers. I'm guilty of that. $596 million worth of unfinished drinks. How many of you relate to any of this? $241 million worth of frozen food. That's what I've been doing, throwing away my frozen food. A total of $5.3 billion on all forms of food. It represents more than 13 times the $386 million donated by Australian household to overseas agencies. So do you understand that we could all save a lot of money by buying less and eating what we buy? How many of you know you're guilty of it? Well, I want to tell you something, Erin. I'm well aware that I buy more food than I eat. I don't know why. When I go shopping, I, I think I'm going to need this stuff, and I end up throwing it away at the end of the week. I'm trying to stop doing that now. Or I buy the food with the intention of eating it, and then I, you know, it moves to the back of the fridge, and I forget to eat it. So I'm guilty on that one. I'm trying to change my ways. So... I thought we'd have a little bit of a discussion on what do you reuse? What do you reuse in your homes? Let's have a little discussion about that. I can tell you what I reuse, but let's hear what you reuse first. Yeah, ne ne nada, 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 is nada saying that it helps to have a smaller fridge and freezer so you can't stockpile as much. All right, so... Nada, Nada, I'm going to say Nada, it's easier for me. Nada says that she you reuses water bottles. I have a, a, a drink mug that is specifically for water. I don't use water bottles anymore. So, but that's okay. So you reuse yours. Yep. How many of you reuse your water bottles? Yes, Jody's saying that sometimes she buys too much fruit and it goes bad before I can get to it. Um, I find that uh, I've started buying more frozen fruit for things like um, smoothies and things. So the only fresh fruit I buy is that that I'm going to eat in a hurry, right? So, for example... Strawberries are in season. I will buy strawberries, but I'll eat them in the first couple of days, and then I will move to frozen fruit. All right, good point. So you, you reuse your plastic bottles. Kerry, that's good. Yes, I agree with you, Erin. I also have a half heavy plastic water bottle that's reusable. And I have a water filter in my fridge, and that's what I do instead of buying bottled water. Yep. Yes, I find that if I buy fruit, I throw it away. I even bought some fruit last week that was already prepared, you know, it was already chopped up because it, I wanted to buy a smaller amount. But I want to tell you, I even then I threw some away. So are you buying the sparkling water bottles at the store or are you, do you have a soda stream and making your own? This is Linda who's talking about that. All right, so Kerry, I want to talk about repurposing shopping bags. So hold on one second. If I want to get to that point because that's one thing I would like to know what to do with them. 
You like to do crafts with cardboard. Yeah, that's good. All right. You use your coffee browns, grounds after brewing coffee because you put it in coconut oil and use it as a face scrub. What a great idea. And add brown sugar to it as well. That's great. Ah. All right. So, um, Linda, I stopped doing that. I bought a soda stream and made my own sparkling water. And it's a little bit more inconvenient, but I don't have plastic bottles going into the garbage all the time. It doesn't taste quite the same. But what I like about it is you can control the amount of sugar. And if you're just drinking sparkling water, you know, that, that's even easier. All right, so Kerry, tell us about how you reuse your shopping bags. And I just remind me, please, if I forget about it, I have a um, suggestion on shopping bags that I want to add. Well, Yeah, that's why I like the soda stream, Linda, um, because, you know, it tells you to put three pumps worth of, of um, syrup in there, and I, I put one. And it just flavors the water nicely. Thank you. All right, so you use your plastic bags, Nada, for donation items, all right? Yes, it's getting, it's putting them to a second use. It's reusing them. Exactly. How many of you carry, uh, I, I was reading this this week and I thought that's a good idea. Um, actually, let me get, wait a minute. Now, I don't know about where you live, but here in Canada, they're charging for plastic bags now if you, if you need plastic bags. So how many of you take your own bags when you go shopping? Yeah, I, I, I turn my plain water into bubble water just by C2O in it. That's all. Yeah, you don't have to put stuff in if you don't want to. All right, so Kerry says she gets the paper bags and rebags her groceries in those and use the plastic bags to clean out her litter box, all right? So therefore, again, she's putting it to a second purpose. Anybody who's got a dog, you know, they, they know how to recycle plastic bags. Yes, I, I take my own bags, plus I carry, how many of you have seen these? Has anybody not seen this? I've got a really good thing that I learned. I, I just don't want to spend the time showing you what it is if you all know what it is. Okay, so you've got one of those. Okay, Beth, so here you go, Jody. Comes from Hawaii, actually. You just undo it. <laughs> and, I, and it actually is a shopping bag and a fairly decent sized one. And when you're finished with it, when you're finished with it, you just literally feed it back in to its little pocket, which is really good for when you're just going for to pick up the milk or you know, something small. Isn't that cool? Now then. <laughs> I didn't do that quite right. <laughs> I nearly had it right. Wait a minute. Let me undo it again. I did it the wrong way. Story of my life, right? 
Um, so now then, if you'd like to have your version of this, this is what I saw somewhere, and I thought this was clever. Take a plastic bag and fold it and put it, you know, fold it as small as you can. Yeah, Amazon's got them. Okay, Beth. But you can make your own, all right? Just take a plastic bag and fold it five times. I think most things you can only fold five times. And then put an elastic band around it. You know, leave the loopies out or leave one of the loopies out and just put an elastic band around it and throw it in your purse. So I have this attached to my keys so that if ever I just need that extra bag, have you noticed that I'll take the bags that I want for shopping and I always need that extra one and I've always got it. And I also try and throw a couple of plastic bags in as well, just you know, so that I can use them if I need to. Okay, hang on a second. You also use your plastic bags to make a de-spooking tool. You tie them up, oh, for your horses? Okay, anybody else got a use for plastic bags? Because I, I just feel, yeah, that would make sense, right? And um, does anybody not know what a de-spooking tool is? <laughs> yeah, I had to think that one through, but I know what she meant. I had to, I had to sort of think about it. What gave it away was the old riding crop, because I thought it has to do with horses. Because Okay, so you reuse, you use your plastic bags with your grandson. Okay, it's the same sort of situation as with a dog. Yes, and so you tie them onto a crop and then you flutter it around and you teach the horse not to get spooked by a flying um, plastic bag or somebody who's got one. All right, so good, good stuff, a good use for it. Now, have any of you found a use for egg cartons? Yeah, you have cats and dogs, that's right. Um, so anybody reuse their Anybody reuse their egg cartons? Yes, the uh, the the paper ones are really good for soundproofing. You're quite right. They're great for putting your jewelry in. They keep keep your jewelry separated. I use mine for my uh, K cups and my coffee maker. You know, I buy my coffee in bulk, and then I put them into reusable K-cups. Um, and then I put them in egg cartons. How many of you going, never thought of that one? Yes, to organize any jewelry in a drawer, uh, they're, they're really good for that. Anybody use them for anything else? And by the way, egg cartons have two different shapes, all right? You've got the bit where the eggs fit in, and then you've got the lid, and the lid is a totally different one. Um, so, you know, if you're organizing a drawer, you can put the earrings and things into the where the eggs go and the bigger stuff into the lid because the lid only, you know, has sort of almost without a divider in it. Makes sense. I know we're smart. That's why we get together and have these discussions, Nader. I also, by the way, use my egg cartons uh, when I finished with them for my painting. I, you know, I keep my leftover paints in little shot glasses. <laughs> no, I don't drink the shots first. Um, but I keep them in little shot glasses with uh, press and seal over the top. And I put them into 
at the egg cartons. Does that make sense? Yes, they'd make very good Legos. You're right. Yeah. Good idea to turn them in for young kids because they're not going to do any harm. They're not going to swallow them, that's for sure. All right, how about wet wipes? Anybody got a use for wet wipes? My wet wipes never do single duty. <laughs> My my wet wipes, as soon as I've used them on my face, which is where I use them, I then throw them into a um, small jar with a spritz of Lysol, a little bit of soap, and I shake it up and I rinse it and I use it again and again <laughs> and sometimes again, and then it goes to the studio so that I can use it for cleaning stuff, uh, you know, cleaning out my paint containers. Yeah, they actually, wet wipes are way better than paper towels in terms of being able to reuse them. How many of you reuse your paper towels? <laughs> I want to tell you, I, you know, it's amazing the things that I've done in my life, but I found that you, you've got to think about what you use. Your, first of all, I don't use many paper towels because I use face cloths instead of paper towels. Do any of you know that? I have a whole stack of face cloths that I use instead of paper towels. But occasionally... Very you know, occasionally when I do use a paper towel and I just used it maybe to to wipe something up, I just run it under this the um, the tap and I just put it flat and let it dry. And you know, you can use it two or three times if you do that. I mean, that sounds really picky, but I actually, most of my paper towels, when I use them, I use them and I throw them into paint cans, you know, because I'm an artist. So I buy a lot of white paint and black paint in, you know, household paint cans. And I keep those cans and I throw my paper towels in there. And then when I'm cleaning out my paint containers, I turn them upside down into the can with the paper towels in it. All right, so you recycle old shirts and use them as rags. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I found using paper towels, reusing paper towels, if you buy good ones to start with, you see, that's the other thing. It's like, you know, I, it took me a long time to realize you could reuse wet wipes. That was my, that was a huge aha moment for me. And by the way, wet wipes make really good Swiffer things as well if you want to use them on the floor. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. So do um, face cloths. I buy big face cloths and use them as Swiffer dusters for the floor. So I buy my coffee in cans. Uh, I buy good coffee. I buy good coffee and then put it into K-cups. But I also buy, I found that every now and then, if you keep your eyes open, they will put coffee on sale for like seven bucks instead of 16. I mean, it's literally half price. How many of you wait for that? And when it goes down to that price, I will buy two if I can get away with it. Yeah. Um, and so I probably got three cans of coffee sitting in my house at the moment. Because every time I see it drop below 10 bucks, I buy a can. 
I don't care if I need it or not. I just buy it because that's got to be a good price. Yeah, I try. I definitely, and I normally have at least one, one or two in my house before that goes on sale again. So I, it, I've worked out a system that works quite well. So do you understand what I was saying about my paints that I'm throwing them into my cans? Um, because I don't want to throw my acrylic dirty water into the system. Does it, did you guys get that? That instead of rinsing out all my containers and putting it down into the rivers and so forth, what I'm actually doing is wiping out my paint can and my paint containers and then putting those rags uh, into the coffee tins to dry. Yeah, you buy your, your coffee in bulk. Yes, how many of you are buying more bulk items than you used to? And I like the idea that Linda was saying that, you know, that the supermarkets now in, in, in England are allowing you to bring your own containers so that they can just fill it up with what you need. Yeah, I think, Neda, I think that we all need to do what we can, all right? Um, I don't, I think it's like everything else in life. If, if after this broadcast, if we all do one thing more, do you understand what an impact that will have? Now, do you find that people look at you like you're really stingy because you do this stuff? Because I've noticed people go to me and they say to me, are you really washing out a paper towel, so? You know, and they're like, well, <laughs> you know, she's really lost it. Now, I wanted to show you another one. Hang on a second. Okay, so this goes under the category of um, what I'm beginning to do. I, last week, um, bought some of these. I don't know if you have them in, in the UK, but they're like um, instant lunchables, and they are like 270 calories if you eat everything. And inside... They have, you know, they're probably for kids, but, you know, they have a few crackers and they have um, some deli meat and they have some cheese and then they have a candy bar. All right. So they're probably for kids, right? For kids' lunches. But I don't throw the containers away. I, you know, I've now... I've now gone through four of them, I think, and I kept this part because now what I'm doing is I'm filling them up again. So I'm filling them up with celery, with cream cheese. I've got some crackers. I've got some deli meat in here and some tomatoes. Hi, Becca. All right, so makes sense. So why would I, I'm going, why don't I make my own? As I think Linda was saying, right? Much cheaper to make my own. And I just stack them up. Okay, 
Now then, how many of you are beginning to get salads and things in this in the market supermarket? Do you buy pre-prepared salads or do you buy and make from scratch? The reason I'm asking is they come, um, if you buy them pre-prepared, two things. Happy Mother's Day, Kim. Yeah, they come in really nice size containers. That, that, you know, I get some of my stuff in containers this side, and I get some of it in this size. Now, here's what I started to do. And Linda, what I found out was, that if you buy it pre-prepared, this size will last me for at least two to three meals. You know what I mean? It's they're like they, they fill it right up, and, and I just put it into smaller ones like this. But here's the point that I wanted to make. I am throwing away far less food since I started to buy it pre-prepared. I'm not quite sure why. I think because I buy less. So when I buy you know, the romaine lettuce and, and the carrots and the this and the that and whatever, I find I'm throwing too much away. And that's why I've started going, okay, let me get the pre-prepared and let me divide it up into bite-sized pieces. Okay. So does anybody else keep those sort of containers? They're great for in the garage or... Uh, organizing or whatever, they're, they're really good quality, I find, the ones that they make for food. Does anybody reuse their milk jugs? Okay. <laughs> I saw this done one day and I thought, huh? And then I did it. Yeah. I use mine as containers. So what I do is this is where the, the, the bit at the top is normally. What do you call it? The screw lid. You just cut it down to where that line is here. And then you just cut it across. And now you can just put them in your cupboards like this. Does that make sense? And if you want to get really good, you can actually, you know, put a sticker on here that says what's in it. But um, I find that you can just about see through it anyway. So I've got sort of different additives for <laughs> it actually is quite surprising and how many of you know you can throw an awful lot of stuff into that sort of size all right you use your old milk jugs to start your seedlings yes for tomatoes now we have another thing um, that linda was talking about last year i suggested keeping your the in you know your the cardboard that's left at the end of a toilet roll and just pressing the bottoms in and filling that with earth and using it for seedlings because that you can actually plant straight into the garden because the the actual cardboard will disintegrate um, and so you have no plastic at all <laughs> just just a thought. All right, so what have I forgotten? Yeah, we've talked about egg cartons. What do you use yours for, Kim? I'm hoping that some of you have got some ideas today on this one. You use them for seeds. Yes, another good idea to use them for seeds, absolutely.
You're going to spend the rest of the year downsizing your possessions. Wow, I didn't think you would. Well, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Do you think it'll take the rest of the year? Or are you just going to do it slowly? I know it's taking, it's amazing actually how much time it does take, but I have got a whole house full, but I would imagine that you're talking about a bedroom full, right? How many of you need to do that, to, to just downsize? I found an easy way of doing it, Becca. If you're interested. I found a, a really easy way to do it that's very, yes, it's very forgiving. Um, how much do you want to downsize by, like half or do you have a goal? Is it by a third, a half? Kim, what about you? How much do you want to downsize? There's a reason why I'm asking the question. Three quarters of what you earn, really? Okay, so that's a little that's a little more challenging. I would I don't know, Becky, but you might want to start with just half. You know what I mean? Because I I don't know. Well, I mean, if, if you want to do three quarters, that's up to you. But here's how I did it, Becca, or how I am doing it. You know, I can take a draw or I can take a, a, a QB. All right, Linda, good to see you. And what I will do is I will turn it upside down onto my bed and say to myself, I'm trying to downsize by half. So I am say to myself, I can, I, I have to throw away half. I can keep half, but I need to throw away half. Now, it's really interesting because that, you sort of go, yeah, I want to keep that now. That's a maybe, you know, and you can sort of, it makes it much easier when it's only a few things. And then the next time is I'll take another one out. It might be just the stuff on top of my, um, um, a work, I mean, a top of a, um, what do you call it, a bookcase, all right? I'll take everything off the bookcase, put it on my bed, and go, only half of it can go back. Or I, you know, I will take take my rag drawer, <laughs> you know, I've got a cubie full of rags, and I go, okay, only half of them can go back in. Which half do I want to keep? And, and Be Becca and Kim, I found it really works well because, you know, the stuff you're throwing out, you it's much easier. You go, I can keep half of it. And, you know, it's pretty easy to see which half you don't want. <laughs> now, occasionally, occasionally, Becca, you're going to come across something where it's full of memories. Now, if that is so then I work on the averages. You know, I'll bring another box out and throw that out. And between the two, you know, I might have two QBs and I go between the two, I can only have one QB left. Makes sense. Yep. So I, th I think that you, I think that hanging on to your memories is something that you have every right to do. Um, I, I cannot imagine anybody's telling you to throw away your memories. Right. I still have memories. One day I'm going to pull it out for you guys. I still have a memory box from 40 years ago when I first started to speak. <laughs> right. And, you know, there are all sorts of pamphlets in there where, you know, that my face was on it and also. And I thought, you know, I really should pull that out one day so you guys can see it and probably say goodbye to it because it really has no benefit in my life necessarily anymore. But it, you know, I've always hung on to it. Mm. 
Yeah, um, it's interesting, Kerry, you know, and I understand what you're saying. Kerry is saying that, that she owns more pajamas than clothes. Um, how many of you own more T-shirts than dress-up clothes, all right? Or how many of you own more pairs of shorts than long pants? You know, it's sort of, it's like, it's really interesting what we collect. I keep as well trying to halve that down. In other words, I found out I had about 30 T-shirts. And I said, okay, <laughs> let's get it down to 15. <laughs> you know, and some of them are my Dan Semba T-shirts, and they're very special. I'm not going to throw those away. And some of them are, you know, Dear Mama Sal T-shirts or It's Judy Time T-shirts. I can't throw those away. And then, you know, I've got other ones. So it's like the ones that are, that are other ones are the ones that I throw. But can you recycle T-shirts? Yes. They make great dusters. They make great quilts if you want to keep the memory. Um, they make great tank tops. How many of you have turned your T-shirts into tank tops? I should do that because I like tank tops for the summer, as you can tell. You do that, Kim? Actually, I was thinking I should do that because I wear an awful lot of tank tops in the summer. And um, so that's a thought. And by the way, if they're too snug, you could cut them down the center and turn them into a little... <laughs> How about that? You can take a T-shirt and cut it down the center and turn it into like a summer cardigan. That would be a way to reuse it. <laughs> so I think that how many of you think you're reusing and recycling much more than you did 10 years ago? Yeah, Kerry, I, I know what you mean about being a borderline hermit. It was predicted it was predicted that we would do that. 40 years ago, Faith Popcorn wrote something called the Popcorn Report, and she did say that we would end up um, being much more hermitized by this time. And we are. Yeah. Yes, so I think, I think, you know, if you know that you are recycling and reusing a lot more, uh, I, I actually occasionally will use my plastic bags as packing material. Um, you know, if I'm sending a mug to somebody or something, I will actually, you know, sometimes if it's somebody I know really well, um, I will just, you know, use um, plastic bags as wrapping material rather than the other stuff. So I think the, our challenge is to try and do our bit, right? I don't think we, you know, I think if we individually can try and do just a little bit more, um, that life is a lot easier. Yes, I keep, I keep all the tissue paper, Kim. All the tissue paper that comes in in my Christmas presents or birthday presents, I flatten them out. I flatten them out and I put them into containers. I've done that for years. I occasionally buy new, but most of the time I've got more than enough. And by the way, if you want it to look really new, you can iron it. <laughs> you actually can iron tissue paper.
So may I ask you, what do you still throw away? Let's have a look. You use store bags for trash bags. Yes, I've always done that. I've always done that. So what what do you still throw away? Let me just try and see whether we've got any ideas on. Most of what I throw away is packaging. Do you guys agree with me? And I get so angry about that. I think we need to be a lot more vocal. Hi, Lord. Yeah, I think sometimes, Lord, that, that it's possible that we do that, right? It ends up back to the person. Now, if you're really OCD, you actually put a little note on it to make sure you know who it came from. I think, you know, I look at packaging. I can remember in my youth that you could buy refills for mascara and it was about this big. You didn't have to buy a totally new mascara thing. You just bought the, you know, a refill for it and you squeezed it into the container. Um, I think if I, if you look, you know, I was having that rant recently about you buy deodorant and how much of the deodorant do you really get and how much of it's just packaging. Um, it drives me insane. Uh, oh, I know what. Hang on a second. What have you never heard of? Oh, re um, refills for mascara. That was back in the day. I've got to show you a good one. Hang on a second. How many of you use room fresheners? Yeah, but what I've got to ask you, Carrie, if you could buy them today, would you buy them? I've just got to see who makes this product. I think it's Airwick. You don't want to be without, I would think. All right, so I, I'm, I use, oh, you have asthma, okay. But I do use them, and here's what I found out. I, f I think Airwick makes this. All right? And it, you know, you, it comes with a little bottle inside it, and you, you put you know, some batteries in it. But what I discovered was that you can actually remove the top of this and refill it. By the way, um, Downy works really well as a, as a room freshener. I've actually got El Cheapo perfume that you know I bought at the dollar store or something. And I find that works really well if you want a room freshener. You just water it down nicely and ends up being quite a nice smell. So, but this has very little built-in obsolescence. I hate it when you, when you have built-in obsolescence. It drives me insane. For example, have any of you got a wet jet? Nobody? <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I would mix it with some um, alcohol or something. I actually mixed this with, uh, because I realized the perfume's already got alcohol in it. 
uh, I I mixed it with a, just a little bit of water, and it works. Um, you use a Swiffer mop, I, and you'd realize that you can wash the Swiffer. Oh, do you use the one that looks like a diaper? Kim? Because if so, try using face cloths instead of that diaper thing. It works really well. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, again, well, how long did we say it took for a diaper to, to decompose? Like 50 years? Yeah, you already do. Okay, good girl. <laughs> uh, so I think if we can start looking at these things, did anybody get an idea today that they're thinking, oh, I'm going to try doing that? Um, I wanted to find out, 75 years old, I, I wanted to find out, um, from Jonas, whether he tried the aluminum foil in the dryer. I tell you, I've saved a fortune in doing that. Now for dinner tonight, for those of you who don't know, for dinner tonight, I'm doing stuffed burgers. Do any of you not know how to do that? <laughs> And the reason I'm asking is because if you don't know, then I will put up a quick video on it. But yes, using microfiber cloths instead of paper towels. I use I use face cloths um, for cleaning cloths. I I know that people just go and say and they go, "You've got white cleaning cloths." I go, "Yep." And why? Because they're easy to throw in the wash. So yeah, I find that that you know face cloths make beautiful cleaning cloths for mirrors or anything because they're normally ridged, and that's like a same sort of idea. Well, basically, <laughs> let me try and explain this, Kim. Wait, wait, Kim. I can show you. Hang on. Now, I just want to tell you that if you haven't got one of these and you like burgers, then go to any of my Amazon links and go in that way because, you know, it's a good way of supporting me without costing you any money. And get yourself one of these. I think they're less than five bucks. Okay. So this is called, this is called a stuffed hamburger maker. Okay, and so what you do, I started off by dividing my hamburger into half pound sizes, right? And it's got a little amount on here so you can see how much you need. So then what you do is you take your half pound and I take about a third of it off because I want to have it for the lid. Does that make sense? I'm going to have a stuffed thing and I'm going to want a lid on it. So <clears throat> here's what I do. You yeah, put the burger, the hamburger in there. And then what you do is you just press this down. I've, I've got the video, so I will do it for you. Um, but you press this down. I just want to give Kim the idea. When you've got it sort of flat, Kim, you turn this thing over and then you press this down. And this sort of is not it leaves a ring around the outside. So as you press it down, it pushes the meat around the edges. Does that make sense? So you're left with like a saucer. And then what I did is I put caramel, onions, cheese, and bacon. 
And then I flattened the top bit, put it on top. And then I pound it down like this. And then when I finished, <laughs> actually, when I finished, I turn it like this, take that bit off. And then here is my burger. It's a big burger. But I want to tell you something. You can put anything in there. Um, I, I actually ask um, people what they want. And I had one person ask me for cheese and mushroom. I give them a choice here. Uh, one person wanted cheese and mushroom, and I've got three that want um, caramel, onions, and cheese. But I was saying to Jody, you know, you could put in, yeah, you know something, you know, if you want to support me, just go through one of the links at the bottom of any of my videos. You don't have to buy anything with my name attached to it. Just get yourself one of these, and just because you went through my way first, they will support me. It won't cost you any more. But I'm not joking. This is less than five bucks if you're interested. So, and they make all sorts of different quality ones, right, or different sizes. So to me, I had never done stuffed burgers, but I can't do regular ones now. <laughs> do, do you know what I mean? It does spoil you for a regular burger. But what I like about it is I don't want the bun anymore. Do any of you relate to that? It's like, just let me have the burger. <laughs> I don't need the bun. <laughs> so to me, it's sort of like, um, it's changed the way I eat burgers. It's really tasty. No bun necessary, you're right. And when you get to that middle part, that oozing cheese and caramel onions and bacon, <laughs> you know, you're going, thank goodness summer's here. <laughs> and the question is, what are you going to serve it with? So, um, again, I, I gave a choice today. Either you could have it with salad, and I have various salads, or you could have it um, I, I can do mine. Sometimes I just take bamboo sticks and I put on cubed potatoes, you know, new potatoes, um, yams, butternut squash, whatever. You know, I want to tell you, you barbecue those drizzled with a little bit of honey. Tastes really good. <laughs> oh, by the way, Jody and I both recommend um, instead of using regular oil, try um, sesame oil. It gives it a totally great taste. <laughs> so it should be fun. Now, sometimes the burgers don't stay together quite as well as I would like them to. I've got to be quite honest, but, you know, nobody seems to care. Yeah, it does take it to another level, doesn't it? It's the same thing if you have Holstein. Is it Holstein sauce? I throw that in stuff occasionally. YouTube makes you hungry. No, you get hungry when you watch YouTube. <laughs> don't blame YouTube. <laughs> So for those of you who didn't hear, I got well and truly triggered yesterday and I owned it and I understand why. <laughs> and have any of you, just while we've got a few minutes left, have any, did any of you got any um, more insights into being triggered? How many of you have noticed that you're much more aware of when you get triggered now? I'm, I'm trying to make sure that the work that we're doing is paying off for you guys. And did any of you hear about my... Everybody eats on YouTube now. <laughs> did, did you hear about my art disaster of the week? Yes, you're so aware of it now, Jody. Yeah. And you know something? That's why I wanted to talk to people about triggers. Oh, by the way, oh, 
Oh, good. Okay. I actually, this is one of the containers that I reused. I made my own corn. Um, I made my own tortillas today. I've never made them before. And what I did is I wrapped the uh, inside. I've got cream cheese and deli meat. So this is my new way of making a snack. So I can't believe I actually did it. <laughs> it's like it took a lifetime for me to do that, but I did it. So that's all ready for a snack. I have no idea. Seriously, so get it back on. Yeah. For those of you who didn't, you weren't here for the story, um, I came back from shopping yesterday and found a realtor had put signs all over my lawn for the property he was selling across the street from me. And I don't know about the rest of you, but it was like, really? You just decided you were going to do that? <laughs> so, you know, I was not a happy camper. So what I did was I walked across and I knocked on the door and seeking first to understand. Because maybe Yvonne had given him permission or maybe Wade had, you know, I just said, just as a matter of interest, I see you got signs across the road, and the property across the road. Did somebody say it was okay for you to put them there? And he said, no, we always do that. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm the owner from across the road and do me a favor. That's my property you just trespassed on. Could you go and get your signs, please? Take them off my property. If you had been polite enough to ask me, I probably would have let you do it, seeing as you're arrogant enough to think that you don't need to get them off my property. Thank you. <laughs> um, what was I saying on Friday? Sometimes we just don't have the words, right, to, to, to do these things. But I want you all to understand, the last time I checked, what I do with my property is my business. You do not have the right to walk onto my property and stick your signs on it. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> And, you know, the fact that everybody does it, I said, really, I know an awful lot of realtors that wouldn't die rather than do that. They would always ask. And so, to me, this is just downright bad manners. And I, there's something very sad about society. By the way, I wanted to ask you, oh, quickly, before we go, um, how many of you are going to be watching... Harry and Meghan get married. Prince Harry, that is. I want to know where the romantics are in the room. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what is your best guess? What sort of dress do you think she ha she will have? My I'm throwing out, I think she will have an elegant dress rather than a princess dress. Do you know what I mean? I think it'll be slim rather than... Less is more is what I think. Yes, a sheath kind of dress. I would think almost uh, maybe even a mermaid type one you know, where it's, it has a little more at the bottom. But, yeah, I think it'll show her off rather than how much fabric can we put into this. Slim and elegant, yes, very definitely. I'm thinking a bit like... Was it, was it Catherine's, Catherine's sister... Wore a very elegant dress as maid of honor to um, Catherine. 
Yeah, that's what I think. And do we think that he will wear military uniform or will he be in the coat and tails type thing? Yeah, Pippa, thank you. Hi, Sakura. So I think because, yeah, I think he probably will wear his military as well. Because his brother did and looked great, right? Um, and I think, I think um, to honor the military as well, I think that subconsciously it's a good thing. And how many of you think there is a possibility that Harry and Meghan may outshine Kate and William? You've already set your DVR. Yeah, I th you know, this part of me goes because they are going to be a lot more free to be human, if you know what I mean, rather than the pomp and ceremony that Kate and William have to keep up. So I'm thinking, yeah, I think they will change how, how we see the royal family. Can you believe that in your lifetime, listen to this one, people, can you believe that in your lifetime, the monarchy has allowed somebody who is divorced of mixed race and American to marry a royal. I don't know about the rest of you. This is like wonderful. That is really bringing the monarchy into the 21st century. <laughs> you know, this is like about time. So I think, yes, I'm so excited as well. I think it will be, I don't know why I, I, I'm crying just talking about it. I just think that, yeah, I think that they are going to do a lot of good stuff. I really do. I think that he will continue to do things that would make his mommy proud. Do you know what I mean? You know, he lived under William's shadow for a long time. You know, knowing that he was not the heir, but the spare. And I think that he is going to shine. I think you're going to see him do more and more charitable work. I think you're going to see him do the two of them together. Are going to, you know, do so much humanitarian work. I, I think his mommy is going to be really proud somewhere. Yes, please do. We love to see those pictures. I think that Will has done a great job in honoring his mum. And I think we all miss Diana. Um, you know, she died on my 50th birthday, the night of my 50th birthday. And... I realized today just how much impact she had. You know what I mean? She really did so much to change people's perception of what it was to be a royal. So, you know, I look at it and say, I think Harry will take, Harry will be, Harry and Meghan, I believe, will be a wonderful um, connection between the British people and the monarchy. I think that they will, they appear to really enjoy him because he's not, you know, full of pomp and ceremony. She was different in a great way. Yes, she was. And I think in her own way, she led the way for the monarchy to change. And I think that's why they didn't like her at the time, because she told the truth. If you look at the pictures today, I don't know if, if any of you have been doing that, but if you look at the pictures today of the last few years of her life, I mean, without saying a word, she communicated how bad that marriage was. 
you know, <laughs> she didn't have to say anything. Um, and then she got her own, she got her own power. And she just went out and started just living her own life, even though she was still married at the time. But she just went out and did the things she wanted to do, which were all, you know, charitable things. And whether it was landmines or whatever, she just did it. And she didn't care that she was a royal. I think the fact that Harry talked about mental health, that he suffered from mental health issues, was probably the defining moment for me. For a royal to be able to admit they had a mental health problem, I think, was awesome. And as he so rightly said, you know, when your mom dies when you are 12, I think he was 12, right? How can you not have a mental health problem? You know, it was just like, yeah. So I think it's going to be a great wedding. I, I, you can tell I'm going to cry the whole way through it. Um, so does anybody think she'll wear a big dress? Just, I just want to know whether. And will she wear white? See, there's, there's an interesting thing. Will she actually wear white? My sense is probably. But she doesn't have to. Gosh, wouldn't that be a first? Yeah, I think she'll wear. Yeah, I, it would be interesting. I'm, I'm going... Yeah, cream or off-white, yes. Yeah, I don't think she's going to be wearing red or anything. No, that isn't what I meant. But I wondered whether she would not wear white because, you know, it, it'd be interesting to see. So let's see how, how we do on that one. By the way, do any of you want... Um, what time would it be broadcast here? And we Hang on, Jody knows because she said a DVR. I've got to go and cook burgers. By the way, did you know they already made the movie of it? Um, six to 11, that's three to eight. Yikes. Guess I won't be getting much sleep on Saturday morning. That's Saturday morning, right? <laughs> Coverage starts. Yeah. Okay, so obviously I'm going to have to set some alarms there or stay up the night. People, I've got to go and cook burgers, turn their barbecue on. By the way, if you have not got a mat for your barbecue, get one. I want to tell you, my life is, I, I cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner on my barbecue because I've got a barbecue mat. It's just so nice not to have to heat up the kitchen and just to be able to stand out there. All right, everybody. So I'm sending you a big hug. Have a super week. And thank you for being here and look after one another. And most of all, <laughs> please remember to look after yourself. All right, everybody. Thanks to you all. This is Dear Mama Sal saying bye-bye for now. And what a romantic week it's going to be. <laughs> bye.